So when I first entered 2018, of course I was excited. I had all my resolutions and my goals planned out. I, I have so much more things to do and learn and, um, you know, like just really excited for like a new year and a new beginning. Unfortunately, that was quickly halted um, in the beginning of January. I was diagnosed with diabetes. I had to go for a employment medical checkup and when I went for the medical checkup, I failed the urine test and so the clinic um, have requested me to come again for a, for a second test. Um, and I didn't go because I thought that, oh, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, it's just a employment medical checkup, you know, I, like, it's not like it's a big deal, like, why can't they just send a report anyway? But anyway, the clinic was insistent and actually said that they're not going to send the report to my company if I didn't do the second urine test. So I made a second trip back to the clinic and, um, it was a like fasting blood sugar. I was not supposed to have anything to eat or drink, at least eight to 12 hours before. And when I did the urine test, um, my blood sugar level was high. So the clinic said, okay, you know, we're gonna wait for another two hours and you're gonna do the test again. So I did three tests in total for that day and it was not normal. And I failed all three because my sugar level was high. In the end, um, we did a blood test, uh, like a finger prick blood test, and I had a reading of 12 MMOL slash L. I don't know how to pronounce that unit, okay? So I'm just going to refer it as unit, okay? Because I don't know how to pronounce it. So the doctor told me that a normal blood sugar reading, a fasting blood sugar reading for a normal person is anything below 8 and I was a 12, which means that I had quite high blood sugar reading. So the doctor told me that I should go to a polyclinic and have proper testing done because I might have diabetes. And that's what I did. I went to a polyclinic and went for another round of urine tests and blood tests and I was diagnosed to have diabetes on the 11th January of 2018. I had denial for like three days when I got that news because I don't know what it meant. My father has diabetes and so did my late grandfather so I sort of always knew that I have a family history of diabetes and that there's always that, you know, diabetes fear at the back of my head. But I never really did anything about it. I, sure, I was like making sure that I don't eat too much sugar and whatnot. But there's no really benchmark for me as in what constitute like eating too much sugar or carbohydrates. I do know, however, that there are no cure for diabetes and that diabetes is a chronic and progressive disease. You have to take your medications and you have to watch what you eat. But at the time, I and Fauzi, we were trying to conceive a child. So this was all playing in my mind when I was diagnosed to have diabetes. I didn't I feel like a failure or some sort. I feel like I did this to myself. I blame myself. And there was a lot of regret and anger because I should have known better and I should have watched what I ate better. I should have controlled my diet. Um, you know, I should have done anything and everything in my power since I knew that I have a family history of diabetes and I should have done more, but I didn't. And now it's like too late. So. So when the doctor told me that, that diabetes can affect pregnancies and she has actually advised us not to try to conceive first until the diabetes is managed and resolved, I like sort of cried in front of the doctor because I was so overwhelmed. I like literally felt like a complete failure and disappointment. 
Um, <clears throat> so I went back and was in like in a daze and denial for three days. Um, I took the medicine. I was prescribed metformin, and I had to take them twice a day, two in the morning and two at night. And the first day that I took the metformin, I had diarrhea, which was one of the side effects of metformin. So I didn't really feel good about taking medicine because I kept thinking like, well, if I'm going to be a diabetic mother, you know, that's totally going to affect my pregnancy and I don't want to have, like, I want to make sure that my body is primed and healthy, you know, in order to bring a child into this world. So after getting diarrhea, I decided to stop taking the medicine and I decided to sort of take matters into my own health, take control back of my health and decide to reverse my diabetes without medicine. I know that um, there are a lot of people who have done this. I just need to seek them out. I just need to like sort of research, you know, what it is that I can do in order to reverse my diabetes. We often hear people say that, oh, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. You have to take medicine um, and watch what you eat. But I find that that is not true. You can do something about it. You just need to decide if you're willing to do what it takes to do something about it. So on 14th of January 2018, I decided that I was going to go on a diet called the ketogenic diet. And what essentially a ketogenic diet is, is basically low carb, high fat, no sugar meals which sounds really like most diets out there, like Atkins and Paleo, Mediterranean, and there's a lot of diets out there that sound similar but are not necessarily similar because most diets, according to Dr. Jason Fung, um, and he says that all diets will work and all diets will fail. So if all diets will work and all diets will fail, I just have to pick one that I can stick to for a very long time because I'm going to have diabetes for a very long time. So when I was um, researching, I was just searching for people with success stories who has reversed their diabetes. And one of the, and I found a group that is so helpful and so supportive in Facebook. And I also um, listened to a lot of um, TED Talks that um, features doctors who advocate for the reversal of diabetes. And all of them sort of pointed into the same direction, which was you need to eat um, low-carb, high-fat foods. And most often quotes ketogenic as the way to go. So I decided to read up about it. And then um, I said like, okay you know let's let's do this let's go ketogenic and also part of the reason why i have actually picked ketogenic way of eating is because diabetes is going to be with you for a long time so most diets often they lack the sustainability which means that either it's very expensive like organic like if you choose to go organic that can break your bank just to have dinner um so they're either very expensive or they're not tasty or they are difficult to make and if any of these um points uh inside like a, a diet or the way of eating then i know myself that i can't stick to that for long you probably can eat like steamed chicken and salad with no seasoning whatsoever for about three days, then you're gonna feel miserable and then you're gonna go back to your old ways of eating. I don't want that to happen to me because I have always tried that way of eating before and for uh, to try and lose weight and I never stick to them because it's just hard, expensive or just not sustainable and often it just makes 
you miserable it just make every time you look at your food you're just gonna feel miserable and sad and i know that if i'm gonna go back to that i'm not gonna be sticking to it for a very long long time and i wouldn't be able to reverse my di diabetes that way so i picked ketogenic because one of the thing is it is high in fat which means anything that has fat tastes good now i know that you're probably like thinking like what you know doesn't fat it doesn't eating fat makes you fat or like doesn't eating fat gives you high cholesterol or clog your arteries or something like that? Um, and I thought like that too initially, but um, there are a lot of school of thoughts in this manner and with the um, health uh, and medical industry and all the diet that has been introduced. There's just a lot of information out there. It can get overwhelming. It can get confusing. So what I've learned that it is not that simple. Eating fat does not mean that you will get fat. Um, the fats that you want to eat in a ketogenic meal are good fat, natural, nutritious fats like butter and like extra virgin olive oil and coconut oil and avocado and salmon, um, chicken skin and steak fats you know those fats that's around the steak i mean you can eat that and when i found out that that these are the fats that you can eat i was very happy because i know that these are the good these are fats that makes the food tasty and makes you very happy and fat keeps you full longer and gives you that satisfaction after a meal so i was really happy that for ketogenic they advocate to increase your fat and like reduce carbohydrates and like no sugar in your meal so that was one of the things that i did was just to watch what i eat i absolutely like remove all sugar removing sugar was probably the easiest part if you're always like constantly drinking um coke or uh, syrup drinks or sweetened drinks and all that um like like I used to like I used to like really like to drink peach tea and things like that. I think that was the easiest part um, for me was just to remove all the sugar from the things that you are drinking. So I was drinking um, water, green tea, unsweetened tea, um, coffee with no sugar at all, no tree in ones. So that was the easiest part. The hardest part was um, removing the carbohydrates because we are a rice eating culture in Singapore. I mean, so obviously I did not eat rice. I removed pasta and bread and potatoes and carrots and like all these carbohydrates. I removed them and that was the hardest part because the first week I was sort of like craving for bread all the time and I was going through these withdrawal symptoms of like oh i need to eat rice and like i need to have some carbohydrates um but because i know i have diabetes and these are the foods that really increases your blood sugar level because it turns into sugar once they get into your body um i start every time i look at rice every time i feel like like i want to eat rice or i want to eat bread i just tell myself that if i'm going to eat this i'm probably going to lose my eyes eventually so that helps me with the willpower and if it gets too much i just sort of fast for the day and like okay like tomorrow i'm going to fast and you know just fast and just have dinner um when it's dusk so like i did that and once i got that down the rest was pretty easy Fauzi was really supportive in helping me cook meals and finding recipes that are ketogenic and that I can eat. So the first two weeks, I was eating really, really good food. I was eating like steak and a lot of vegetables. I was eating like chicken chop with cream mushroom sauce with lots of mushrooms. I was eating roasted chicken. I was eating meatball with cheese because cheese is allowed because cheese is high in fat. So I can have meatballs with cheese. Um, 
and Fauzi goes to the extent of even making our own meatballs and our own sauces so that there are no like hidden sugars or starches in your food. The thing about buying food from the supermarket is that this is not just about having no carbs and having more protein. This is about making sure that even the protein that you are eating is not processed and does not contain any sugar um, or starches or any binding agents that like cornstarch and things like that. So um, like meatballs in most supermarkets, they have starch, they have sugar um, or some binding agents or some preservatives that you may not know about that may have sugar. So like Fauzi made them ourselves. So my meatballs and my sauces are homemade and I know that there are no sugar or any hidden carbohydrates in them. So the so I was eating all this food and it was so great that like I really feel like it was such a lifesaver to eat ketogenically because I feel like I can eat this, eat like this for a long time and I don't feel deprived, I don't feel miserable, I don't feel like I'm on a diet, I don't feel like I'm a diabetic and therefore I'm eating like bad food or food that just sucks. Um, and I feel really good about myself and I really feel like, yeah, I can do 